Singapore is a small island smack right in the middle of Southeast Asia and it is filled with treasures. What treasures, you ask? Well, let me show you. I am Biogo MJ. I'm currently at the heart of Singapore where a beautiful park exists with thriving wildlife, Windsor Nature Park. This green buffer is also home to a wide variety of insects, other creepy crawlies and the food web that they support. So let's think small this episode. Insects create the biological foundation of all land-based ecosystems. Needless to say, they are really important to the world, but they are also often misunderstood and outright feared at times. All insects have bodies that are divided into three parts, the head, the thorax and the abdomen. This is the polyrachis ant, aka the spiny ant. They are commonly found in our parks and gardens. For the spiny worker ants, they have cool spikes on their thorax as a defense mechanism against predators. We're gonna head into Venus Loop where insects abound. Insects also have six legs and some of them have wings. Look at this longhorn beetle resting here. Can you count how many legs it has? One, two, three, four, five, six. Yes, six legs. When you look at the caterpillar, you might wonder, are they insects? But some caterpillars have more than six legs, like this one. Well, caterpillars have two sets of legs. They have one set of true six legs, which are often located on the thorax near the head. The other set of legs are known as prolex, aka fake legs. Prolex exists to help the caterpillar grip onto a stick or a leaf more securely while they eat. Come, we're turning in here to look for some insects. Insects are invertebrates, meaning that they don't have a backbone like us, but they have an exoskeleton, which is a hard outer covering that protects them. Having a hard outer covering means that when they grow, they need to molt, removing the old shell that is too small for them. Do you hear that? That's the sound of the cicadas. We're in luck. That's a cicada. It's a live one. Cicadas are not easy to find because of how well they camouflage. But if you come to nature areas like this, you can find their molt quite easily. We've already seen a few different kinds of insects. But did you know that more than 1 million insects have been identified all around the world? Some entomologists even estimated that there may be as many as 10 million species out there. Insects can be categorised into approximately 30 groups. Some of them may look so different that you might not even realise that they are insects. Like this fluffy thing! This little fluff is actually a plant hopper nymph and they look wildly different from their adult counterparts. Plant hoppers are true bugs, which are a group of insects known as Hemiptera. Adult plant hoppers can look like this, or this, or this. They have all lost the fluff of their youths and are going for a less fabulous look. People often use the words insects and bugs interchangeably, but bugs actually refer to a specific group of insects within the large insect family. They all have piercing, sucking mouth parts and most of them feed on the juice of the plants. But some bugs, such as the assassin bugs, are actually carnivorous, so they go out to hunt other insects as their prey. There is a freshwater stream, which means there are pond skaters, which are actually part of the bug family, Hemiptera. They find prey using the sensitive hairs on their legs to detect motions of insects falling into the stream. And once they find them, boom. As you can see, there's a bunch of flies hovering around me and that is because there is poop right in front of me. And I might have stepped on it. I hope not. Flies are part of the group Diptera, which only uses one pair of wings to fly because their hind wings have evolved into these cool, advanced structures known as hotiers that help the fly to rotate its body and do all sorts of acrobatic movements while in the sky. There's a robber fly holding on to the tip of the leaf here. And it looks really weird and now it's doing crunches. The robber fly is a very special kind of fly. Instead of relying on waste products of other animals, robber fly hunts for other insects which is why it is also known as the assassin fly. Mosquitoes are part of the family Culicidae and interestingly, only the females suck blood. Males, on the other hand, prefer plant saps. After sucking out blood, mosquitoes will then lay their eggs in still water which will eventually become little larvae like this. Hello. It's a beetle. Oh! Beetles are part of the group Coleoptera and they are the largest insect group of all, making up almost 40% of currently known insect species. Some of the fan favourites amongst the insects are from the beetle group. 
the majestic rhinoceros beetle, the equally amazing stag beetle, the ladybug, which is a beetle and not a bug, the tiger beetle, which is the fastest running insect in the world, and my favourite, the tortoise beetle. Oh, wow! Look at this white hairy thing moving on the stem. Believe it or not, it is also a beetle. It is the lava of a ladybug. This specific species of ladybug lava mimics its favourite prey, the mealybug. That's because mealybugs have a symbiotic relationship with ants. And by looking like mealybugs, the ladybug nymph can confuse the security and enjoy a good meal without the fear of being attacked by ants. This beautiful insect camouflaging against the leaf is a katydid, which is part of the Orthoptera family, which also includes the crickets and the grasshoppers. This group of insects are known for their ability to jump. They have thick muscular legs that can launch themselves in the air. They can also produce sound by rubbing their wings against their hind legs, and this is called stridulation. Right in front of me, dangling from a silk, is a backward moth larva. You can actually see the larva picking out from its protective casing which is made by sticking bits and pieces of debris, wood and dirt together so that it can protect itself and hide inside. The backworm moth larva is a kind of caterpillar and caterpillars can grow up to become either the butterflies or the moths which belong to the group Lepidoptera. There are three butterflies here. One, two, three. They are one of the most beautiful insects around and if you look closely at their colourful wings, you see that it is made up of many tiny scales which are actually flattened tiny hair. Look at the figs up there! There's also a bunch of fig wasps flying around. The fig wasp is a kind of wasp that has a very special relationship with the fig tree. Wasps are from the group Hymenoptera alongside the bees and ants. Yes, ants are closely related to bees and wasps. If you look very closely at their body structures, you can see their similarities. So right here, we have a little bee which stuffed its head inside the flower. Bees and wasps are master pollinators of the world. It is said that bees alone pollinate 80% of all flowering plants, which includes many of the fruits and vegetables that we eat. We definitely need to thank them. We have a dragonfly on the bark of the tree. This dragonfly is known as the tree hugger because it looks like it's hugging a tree. Dragonflies and damselflies are from the group Odonata and the ancestors of this group appeared more than 300 million years ago, even before the dinosaurs. The Odonata group has two pairs of strong, transparent wings that can move independently of each other and that allows the dragonfly to manoeuvre through the air easily, taking sharp turns and even hovering above a spot. Ooh, Ooh a forest cockroach! Cockroaches are from the group Blatodiae. Forest cockroaches can be quite varied. This is the dried leaf cockroach which kind of looks like a dried leaf and we also have the peel cockroach which can roll itself up to protect its vulnerable underside. Believe it or not, termites are under the same group as the cockroaches, Blatodiae. So they are essentially social cockroaches. We cannot talk about insects without mentioning the group Mentodiae. That's the group that the praying mantises are part of. Praying mantis is one of the coolest insects you can find around. Not only do they own a pair of scythe-like arms to grab their prey, they can look really different to camouflage into different surroundings. Having said that, they are definitely savage eaters that can take on anything within their size range. I definitely won't want to be eaten by a mantis. Let's go! Usually, when people think about creepy crawlies, they don't only think about insects, but also other animals that may sometimes be mistaken for insects. Like this harvest man over here. Can you see this bunch of web here? It is possibly a spider's nest. Oh, so pretty. So that's where they lay all the baby spiders. Spiders are arachnids and there are many different types of spiders out there. Spiders that specialise in pouncing on its prey, spiders that set up intricate webs and wait for its prey to fall into its trap, and even spiders that mimic other animals. Like this ant mimicking spider here. This one is trying to look like a red weaver ant, while this other spider is trying to look like the spiny ant we saw earlier. In this area, you can also find creatures such as millipedes and centipedes which are under the group Myrapoda and they are not insects. Wow, there's a giant millipede! Millipedes are said to have 1,000 legs but only one species has that many legs. Most of them have between 40 to 400 pairs of legs. They are really important to the ecosystem as nature's cleanup crew. On the other hand, 
Centipedes can have between 15 to 177 pets. They are incredible hunters that can eat all sorts of insects. And of course, this large number of legs are nowhere near the six legs that insects have. So nope, not insects. Whee! So we gotta be careful. Wow, that was an amazing journey back there. We spotted so many interesting critters and who knew we had such a wide variety of insects? Well kids, as our exciting journey comes to an end, let's take a moment to cherish the precious treasures we've discovered today. Our incredible wildlife. From the ones that fly, to the ones that crawl, from the ones that search for food, to the ones that wait for food, each of these treasures play an important role in the world. Together, they form an exciting world that would otherwise be pretty lacking. Remember to do our part and take care of nature so that we can continue to enjoy all these treasures around us. That's all for this season of Wildlife Treasure Hunt. Join me next time for more adventures!